Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to talk about access macros. Macros in access are a saved set of instructions. So if you find yourself repeatedly doing the same activity, such as opening the same reports every morning, you could automate that activity by saving those instructions in a macro and simply running the macro. We're going to look at some of the macros that the Northwind database already has. And if you double click them, you're going to run them. So be sure to right click and look in design view if you want to see what the macro consists of. But before we examine an existing macro, let's just go ahead and close that and create one from scratch. I'm going to go to the create tab and then the macro button. And here we are in macro design view. And the whole trick to access macros is picking the action that describes the task that you're trying to automate. So a macro is simply a set of saved actions. Once you find that action that you want to automate, and in this case, I'm going to choose the open report action, then it's just a matter of fill in the blank programming because we're going to open a report. It's prompting me, obviously, for a report name. I'll choose this alphabetical list of products and then a view, and I can open it in report view. They provide that as a default value, or I can change that. I'll change that to print preview. Some of the other arguments are optional. Let's go ahead and save this, and I'm going to call this open reports macro, and then I'm going to run it to see if it works, and it's opening up the alphabetical list of products report in print preview. Great. Now, if that's all it did, I wouldn't probably need a macro for that, but let's open up another report. I'm going to open up the catalog report and in print preview again and save this and close the open reports macro. And now I've got it over here in my navigation window. And if I double click it, then I've opened both the catalog and the alphabetical list of products reports. So I've quickly automated that task. Now, once you've created a macro, what's really cool is if you create a form, and let's just go into form design, add a command button to that form, and then attach the macro to that command button. And I believe I can, yes, run that macro from the miscellaneous category. But I'm going to click cancel here just to show you how to do it through the property sheet. First of all, I'm going to change the caption on the command button to open reports. And then on the event tab, on the on click property, I can see all of the macros that exist in this database. And I'm going to scroll down and grab my open reports macro. Now, sometimes you'll see the macro name and then dot and then another name. And that's because that particular macro, such as customer phone list, customer labels dialogue, these ones that are already in the Northwind database, have multiple macros inside them. And if you organize multiple macros inside of one macro object, the multiple macros are called sub macros. So if you have several macros that could be organized together in one macro object, that's where that dot syntax comes from. In this case, we just have the open reports macro, and I'm going to save this form and call it my navigation form and look at it in form view and click my button. And there we go. I've got my two reports that are opening based on the open reports macro. That's a common reason why we create macros is not to run them from the navigation screen, but rather to attach them to a command button. I want to show you one more thing about macros. If you go into design view and I use the command button wizard, create a button that does an action such as close the form. Next, let's use a caption of close and call it the close button. Then I want to show you that the on click property has an embedded macro. Now, an embedded macro means it's embedded directly in this form. The benefit of an embedded macro is if I copied this form from one database to another, the embedded macros would go with it. However, that can create a bigger form than necessary. So it's just like relational database concepts. If you're going to use that same macro on multiple forms, it's better to save the macro here in the navigation pane and sometimes we call that a global macro, and then use that, point to that macro from several different forms rather than embed the macro directly in each form. This embedded macro, if I click this build button, here's the action that you created through the wizard, the closed window action. I'm going to 
copy that action and create macro. I'm going to paste that close window action in and save it as the close macro. I'd be better off using this close macro than embedding that macro in multiple forms because I will have a smaller database if I only have one global macro versus an embedded macro in multiple forms. And also, if I decide to modify that macro, if it's a global macro, it will update every form that I've used that macro on as opposed to having to go into each form and modify or change the close button. Now we know the basics of macros. Let's examine this customer labels dialog macro and design view and see what Northwind has provided for us. First of all, they provide some nice comments and we use a slash star star slash syntax for a comment. And then here are our sub macros, which simply mean that this macro, this customer labels dialog macro contains one, two, three, four sub macros which are macros in and of themselves. We're just organizing them together in the customer labels dialog macro object. And we can expand them, see how many actions each one of them contains. This cancel sub macro contains only one action, a closed window action. This print sub macro is interesting because it contains some if then and if logic where you can do a test and run that action if the test is true. And so this macro, this customer label dialog macro goes with this customer labels dialog form. So that macro is checking whether the all countries or the specific country radio buttons are selected. And if a specific country radio button is selected, which country is then selected in this drop down list? And then we preview those labels for that particular country or if we have all countries and we preview, then we have all countries in our labels. This is a neat little macro that goes with the form of the same name and shows some logic and shows some different macro actions that you can use. The final thing I want to say about access macros is that they are a different animal than the macros in any other Microsoft Office product. In other Microsoft Office products, such as Word and Excel, when you create a macro, you record your actions on the screen, which in turn writes VBA, Visual Basic for Applications Code. And Access has VBA as well, and it's stored in these modules. But macros in Access are unique animals made up of these macro actions. So you're not going to find these types of macros in any other Microsoft Office product. It's just a unique tool that access databases have. And it's great because of the advanced power of these actions and how it prompts you once you pick the action. So the trick to access macros is simply getting comfortable with this long list of macro actions. Then you get that fill in the blanks ability to modify what that action is going to do. So when I need to automate instructions or a task, I always start out trying to do it through a macro in Access versus writing VBA code. There's a lot of overlap between what the two can do. And if you're a Visual Basic programmer, then by all means, go ahead and just write the Visual Basic. But if you're new to programming or new to Access, then know that these macro actions will automate a vast majority of the little tasks that you're wanting to automate. One final thing I want to say about macro actions, too, is that note that you can take a macro action and convert it to Visual Basic should you need to go beyond what macro action can do. So that's a nice way to get started on Visual Basic VBA, which will be the subject of my next YouTube in this Access A to Z series. Thank you.